high school sports fans. Varsity Media Pass is the exclusive live stream partner of Nassau County Playoffs. For semifinal and championship coverage of boys and girls lacrosse, softball, and baseball, head to varsitymediapass.com to order. Varsity Media is the home for New York high school sports. Snap more than the ball? We've got specialists for that. Jump shot, leave your knee shot? We've got specialists for that. Face down after that face off? We've got specialists for that. Orland Cohen's top orthopedic team has specialized expertise and extensive training from the nation's premier programs in sports medicine, knee, shoulder, hip, spine, hand, foot, and ankle. So you can feel better, faster. High school sports fans, are you following Varsity Media on our YouTube channel? For the best coverage of New York high school sports, make sure you head to youtube.com slash varsity media. Three easy steps. First, hit that like button, and then be sure to subscribe. And finally, tap that yellow bell to be notified of all of our upcoming sportscasts. Thank you for following Varsity Media on YouTube. The players play and the coaches coach and the officials officiate. Spectators should be loud, be proud, and be positive. At this time, we'd like to take a moment of silence yep. in honor of police officer John Dillon, Diller, who passed away yesterday. My cousin's cousin. Yeah. At this time, we'd like you to remain standing for the I'm playing serious. of our national anthem. Please remove your hat. We're looking live at Syosset High School as a local rivalry is renewed on the Varsity Media Sports Network. The Massapequa Pequa Chiefs take on Syosset on the Varsity Media Sports Network. And a pleasant good evening, everybody. Alongside Tom Rooney, I'm John Perez. And Tom, this is a rivalry that goes back uh, many years. And for Syosset, a team that's dropped the last two over to Massapequa. But holistically, both of these teams, Massapequa 1-2 and two on the year, Syosset 0-2 oh on the year. They need a win in the worst way. Yeah, both programs not used to being in this position, uh, not used to playing this early, but what they are used to is playing each other in a big game, and this is a big early season game. Both teams need a win. Uh, both teams kind of need a win in the worst way. Um, this is a rivalry game that is always, always a heated, physical, fast game. And how are they going to do it to get the victory today? Well, I think if you're Massapequa, you, you've been a little inconsistent this year. They need to play a little bit more their style. There, there's some unforced turnovers. They need to limit those turnovers and you know they go on these great runs and then you know they struggle at times so they got to be more consistent if you're syosset you got to get brody waxer involved he's a key player for you 
Um, I think he's on the verge of a breakout game, and, and if they can get him going, that's good news for Syasi. And a big thing there, no hero ball. All right, well, Massapequa, they've got a couple of heroes uh, as well, including our two players to watch in for the Chiefs. Uh, they're going to bring in two of their best in Jack Arjulo and Tyler Burns. Yeah, Jack Gargiulo is, is just a big physical presence on the field. Played a lot of attack last year. They moved him to midfield. He's a tough matchup. He's two-handed, a very, very smart lacrosse player. And Tyler Burns is a younger player. He's a sophomore. He can really sling it. Uh, you know, this is a kid who can really heat up from the wing. Um, if Mespeak was going to win this game today, these two guys have to have big games. And for Syosset, if they want to end up in the win column, uh, David Disqui has done everything he can offensively to get them there, but also Owen Acevedo has been a fun player to watch on the faceoff. Yeah, I think if you've watched Syosset play their first two games, David Disqui has been unbelievable, so we expect him to continue. And Owen Acevedo did a really nice job at Southside, you know, on faceoffs and playing in the field. If he has a good game today for Syosset, that that's going to be good news for them. So there is Syosset and uh, two of the bigger players, obviously, to watch. And let's meet the starting lineups, and we'll start first with Massapequa, as this is a team that's 1-2 and two on the year. Their win coming against Herricks, and then dropping back-to-back -back games against Bayport, Blue Point, and Comac. And, of course, the Weezerek brothers headline the lineup, along with Ricky Geiler, Tyler Burns, Joey Diesso, Jack Gargiulo, Nick Hink, Will Krieg, and Mike Wigan, who will be in the face-off circle. Meanwhile, on the other side for Syosset, their starting lineup led by Brody Waxer, Gio Accardo, Ryan Rosenfeld, Nick Turner, David Disqui, Owen Acevedo, Chase Yaris, Will Cauley, Evan Ostrager, and Jake Gagliano with Josh Weisenfeld in the net. Massapequa in the road, maize and blue, and Syosset in the home, red, white, and black. And we've got lacrosse in Nassau County as Massapequa scoops up the ground ball, and it's Ryan Wieserek to start it off. Yeah, I think you're going to say that a lot today. Ryan Wieserich is tremendous off the ground. He's all over the field. He might be the biggest impact player for Massapequa with everything that he does. And if you're, you're, you're Massapequa, you want to get off to a good start. You know, they, they've had these runs where they've turned the ball over. They really would like to just jump out to a lead and, and allow their really strong defense to take over this game. Yeah, and Mike Draper said that that's been a huge calling card for Massapequa through their first three games. A 7-5 loss to Bayport Blue Point, and then a one-goal loss to Comac. Two very good teams out in Suffolk County. Of course, we've got Bayport Blue Point uh, tilting off against West Islip right now in the Varsity Media Sports Network, so a fun day of lacrosse. It's Owen Acevedo's first shot is gobbled up. Mike Giannotti, who is... Uh, to say the least, Mike, a brick wall between the pipes. Yeah, Michael Giannotti is fantastic, and you saw it there getting tested earlier. Uh, Massapequa offsides early, seven men on the field. Syosset turns the other way, gets a good look from Acevedo, but Giannotti there to, to make the stop. My point being for Massapequa is that they're not afraid to hold on to the ball. They don't force any shots, which is a disciplined team, but at times um, that could lead to a little stag stagnant lacrosse and that's what Mike Draper said they don't want to do today against Syosset. Yeah they certainly have talented players it's a matter of finding that rhythm and uh, you know little things like this just not being you know in sync with some of these short passes but this young man Nolan Weiserich just a freshman very dangerous player very big kid um, he's somebody great look right there. Already four points on the season Dieso steps up and scores. And the Chiefs open it up. Joey Diesso's third goal of the year gives Massapequa a 1-0 lead early on. Yeah, you're going to see the replay here. We just started talking about Nolan Weiserich being a big presence, looking over the defense. And Joey Diesso does a nice job of just sliding into space and a, and a step down right there to give the Chiefs a 1-0 lead. Assist on the play by number 12, Nolan Zora. So 1-0 lead on the road. And... Uh, that's a good sign for Massapequa. Obviously, you want to get off to a hot start, especially on the road. And, uh, Tom, always a rivalry game when these two play and two teams that are not afraid to beat each other up and uh, get in position. Uh, but a good start for Massapequa. Yeah, you know, you go on the road, you know, you talk about how important the game is, and you, you jump out early. You get a big save from your goalie early to turn away a good look, and then you come the other way, and, uh, you know, you're able to score and now win a faceoff with a chance to go up too. This is Tyler Burns, goes to X and lets a Ricky Geyer, who played a lot last year, mostly coming off the bench, and is in the starter's role this year. It's a Massapequa team that's got 30 players over the last uh, handful of years that are now playing 
a college lacrosse, and Joe Dieso looking to be one of those next guys at the next level as well. Yeah, this is a kid who's very comfortable with the ball in his stick from, uh, you know, the fall. We saw him play quarterback for that Mass Pequot team. Nice look inside. Geyer just couldn't handle. And so there's Josh Weisenfeld. Last time that we saw him on the Varsity Media Sports Network against Southside, had himself a pretty good game. 18 saves through two games so far, and uh, it was a big reason why Sayasa was in a position to win it. Here's Brody Waxer the other way as Waxer trying to knife inside a fight for possession. And it'll be Chiefs ball. Yeah, I don't mind the take by Waxer. You know, good look early, kind of unsettled situation there. Um, Gennady, great job of getting out of the cage and winning that backup. And it's interesting, you speak to different coaches around Long Island, and obviously uh, his older brother last year, Matt, uh, fantastic uh, goalkeeper for Syosset, and people were saying that Michael could be, if not as good as Matt, greater. That's just the upside that he's got, especially as only a junior. Yeah, I, I've watched this young man play for a lot of years. I think he's as talented as any goalie there is on the island, and uh, you're going to see the, the Mass Pequot defense rely on him. Sias has been relying on David Disque. He leads the way with seven goals so far, including that five-goal performance early on. Tries to slip it in front and then hits off the stick of Acevedo in a chase for the ball. As Josh Chung can't pick it up, and the whistle gives the ball to Massapequa. Yeah, nice job by Pettis there from Massapequa, challenging the ground ball. And here's Weiserk out in space. They got numbers. The dish off. Fake pass and good job staying with it on defense. That's Will Cauley, as John Calabria affectionately calls him, the axe murderer. Yeah, Cauley and, and Weiserick are two poles that impact the game a lot. They seem to always be around the ball. They're knocking down passes, chasing guys down. They don't like to give anybody a free pass. What's interesting with Cauley this year, and we'll see it throughout this game, we saw it against Southside, is that he's already, he's got his mind on college and the rules and the aggressiveness that he can play with. and. Those are still penalties down here in Nassau County. Right. Waxer, good feed inside. It squirts through to Gennady, who gobbles it up. Yes, yeah, Sasa just a little anxious right now on offense. Not, having got a settle, nice check by Waxer. Waxer forces the turnover, goes right into the sticks of Yaris. And then back the other way is Pettis. Matt Pettis up ahead to Ryan Wieserek. Seen the crispest of passing yet as Weezer couldn't handle the ball. And here comes Drew Ginsberg. Ginsberg, a junior, like a two goals last year and three assists. And someone who had one of the best off seasons uh, for a projected starter coming into this year, says John Calabria, their head coach. Yeah, and, and Sasset needs to find, you know, a few more guys to add into the mix. Uh, their middies, Turner and, and Chung and Acevedo, have played a lot. Um, almost every shift, so they're going to need a guy like Ginsburg to, to give them some minutes today. Disque, right into the webbing. As Gennady stood tall again. Yeah, Gennady's been in the right spot so far on, on every every shot. And, uh, you know, we hit little, had a little hecticness in the middle of the field here. Um, and we saw early, you know, if mass people can settle the ball, they can get some good offense. But... You know, Syosset rides hard. This is the kind of game, you know, when you're struggling a little bit on offense, that's what you do. You stretch out, try to make the game a little bit uglier between the lines, maybe get some turnovers. Well, here's Jack Arzulo, and Massapequa wants to get him going. Nine goals, two assists, and 11 points as ball swings its way around to X, and that's Nolan Wieserek, the younger brother of Ryan. Yeah, Massapequa has uh, and Rocco Spolina, and, and, you know, lacrosse fans obviously know the Spolina family, Rocco just a freshman along with okay. Wieserick. So a couple freshmen out there, and Wieserick's gonna test his matchup here. Yeah, he's the son of Brian in that family, and Draper calls him a workhorse. I don't think you expect anything different, especially when you got Spillane in the back of that jersey. Yeah, he's a really talented kid, great stick. You know, obviously physically, uh, you know, a little young right now, but he's somebody that we'll definitely hear from for a lot of years at Massapequa. Josh Weisenfeld comes out of the cage, only a sophomore, and given the keys, the transfer from Jericho. Wax are yeah. taking on a couple of defenders and an aggressive check, as that was Adam yeah. Lamandola, a little too aggressive with Waxer. Yeah, that's another uh, turnover in the clearing game, and we've had a few here. 
And the game has sort of picked up its intensity, right, John? We got some good hits. Oh, nice look. Waxer didn't handle it cleanly, but goes right into the hands of Rosenfeld. He uh, overshoots it and bounced it a little too much in front of the net. And Justin Farrell, the junior starter. Yeah, Coach Draper actually pointed out Justin Farrell uh, on our phone conversation about how well he's played and earned that spot. And it was a very veteran-laden team last year. Only called up a few sophomores. He said, Justin Farrell, I didn't care how old he was. Happy to have him on there. Off the pipe on a scintillating shot by Nolan Wieserak. Great ball movement there. Spolina with the skip over to Wieserak and he just hit the pipe. Nice job by Mass Peak in transition, realizing they had numbers. Well, Tom, we knew coming into this game that this would not be a 17-16 uh, affair, to say the least, but um, what have you thought about the offensive possessions early on through the first eight minutes? Yeah, I, I think what you have here is a bunch of really excited high school kids for a rivalry match. They're, you know, kind of throwing every first pass they see, you know, and not everything is where it should be. Joe Fazio tries to get inside and take it away, Will Cawley. Yeah, it looked like a good look. I'm not sure if it made it all the way to Weisenfeld, but uh, Cawley, as usual, sort of Johnny on the spot there with another ground ball. Will Cawley will be taking his talents to Lehigh. Battle for possession, Disquay dodging. Weaving, tumbling, ball comes loose, flag is out. And a good break for Sayasa, just Nick Turner operates up top. Yeah, that's that's kind of where we see Disquee do some of his best work in those ugly moments where he gets it, you know, away from the cage and he can use his athleticism and his speed and he draws a foul and now we got a free possession here for Sayasa. Waxer from X, drives, overshoots his target. And the penalty upcoming. So an EMO for Syosset. Oh, we got a penalty. Yeah, the, the Syosset extra man unit the other night against Southside actually did a great job. I, I, I thought they got some great looks. Uh, the goalie from Southside, Muscarella, I thought was fantastic. He's excellent, uh, took away some really good shots. But um, they were able to get the ball inside to Nick Turner or Acevedo. They kind of rotate those guys through. Um, and I think it's something that, you know, sometimes you, even though you don't score, you find something that you know you can go to. Everybody is so worried about Disquee, they're worried about Waxer, that inside look can be there. Well, here is Waxer, and then finds its way to Turner, and they'll circle around. Nick Turner, a lot of upside in being seen as the number three option so far, and John Calabria says he's got all the tools, and it's just a matter of time before he becomes a streaky player, but it's Disquee's early season goals that continue to rack up. His eighth of the year, and we're tied at one. Yeah, I mean, you know, I'm, I'm sure know Mass Speaker coaching that. staff is, is very frustrated right now. Disquee is the guy you gotta stop, and he just simply carries to the top, and you know, 15 yards is right in his so shooting cool. range, Scored and you can see why he's a Hopkins-bound midi. I mean, you, you see on the replay here, they're going to circle the ball back. They're going to start their rotation. He carries, and he just kind of, you know, lulls them to sleep a little bit. You know, maybe a little bit of a hitch there that distracts them. Does a good job of stepping in. Ground ball. Nick Hink is there. And clears up ahead. That's a great ground ball by Nick Hink. Flag is out. La Mandola. And now a free possession for the Chiefs. Yeah, a little overzealous. Hink does a good job of picking up that ground ball, rolling away, and then uh, on the clear there, you get, a, I think, a late slash on Syosset. So now it's Piqua with the free possession. Spolina backpedaling and finds its way over to Tyler Burns. So Mass Piqua running out their second midfield here. This is uh, Pettis. Very good athlete, they're gonna invert him behind. Uh, plays a lot of D-Midi for them, but a really good athlete that uh, they need to get going. And obviously with, with the score board at a minute 30, they're not in a major rush. Nice look. And it scores on the pretty feed, Max Ziegler. The senior scoring his first goal of the year and the Chiefs go in front two to one. 
Yeah, nice design right here. You know, you, you asked me before about the offensive possessions. You saw Mass Speaker now really settle it down. They get Pettis behind, excellent athlete, and he's able to get a step and draw a slide. And Ziegler with just a really well-timed cut. And you see Pettis here just kind of gets a step, you know, enough to force the slide from Ostrager there from Syosset. And there's Ziegler coming right down with the left hand. Really nicely done. Michael Draper said that Ziegler, somebody who transformed his body in the offseason has just become a better player and uh, enjoying the fruits of his labor so far. A 2-1 lead for Massapequa. The buck 27 to play. And you're going to have a man up face here, John, uh, on that slash. So if Massapequa can get possession, you'll see their man up unit. Nice job by Acevedo. Yeah, good hustle points by Acevedo. And a timeout called by Sayasa. We'll keep it here. Um, of course, as you take a look at the coaching staffs, and their hats uh, as well. The Syosset and Massapequa communities uh, remembering and honoring the life of a former NYPD officer, uh, Jonathan Diller. And uh, today the cop shop has donated hats to both the coaching staffs and uh, in recognizing the life and memory of Officer John Diller, who passed away um, earlier this week. And uh, our thoughts and prayers go out to the Diller family and the entire NYPD community. Uh, and thank you to the cop shop, uh, obviously, for uh, lending uh, a hand and uh, the hats for the teams. Yeah, nice, nice uh, gesture. We had a moment of silence uh, at the beginning of the game. And, you know, it kind of puts a, a rivalry game in perspective, right? So. Uh, you know, God bless the Diller family. Yeah, Diller from Massapequa, and of course, uh, like we said, thoughts and prayers, and the players wearing blue tape uh, on their helmets as well. Uh, Syosset's doing that, so uh, keeping that memory alive, uh, unfortunately, um, for Diller. The timeout's over, 120 to play, first quarter. A 2-1 lead for Massapequa. Yeah, so Syosset's got to kill off the penalty now. They're going to... Uh, have Waxer pick up the ball. Mass people are looking to double. Well, and who better to get it to than Waxer? Takes good care of the ball, but takes a spill. Flag is out, and we'll be even. As Weezer had called for the trip. And a one minute penalty. So, not exactly um, as good as killing off the penalty and getting back to even strength, but for 15 seconds, eventually. Uh, if it plays down, Syosset will go on the man up. Yeah, there'll be five on five. And, you know, sometimes these situations, there's so much more room out there with that one less defender. This could be a good opportunity for uh, Waxer to dodge. Waxer trying to back down. Dodging inside, finds its way to Acevedo. Another flag is out. And that'll halt play as Will Creek picks it up. And a hold is called. I think Krieg is being sent off as well. So the hold against Krieg, no delay a game call. Um, but either way, not what you drew up for Massapequa, who just had the man advantage and they lose two of their own for uh, the final minute of the, content, uh, the first quarter. Yeah, you go from getting a chance to go six on five to now five on four. And you know, early in the season, you practice so much with coaching staffs with, with different situations. Five on four is not one you normally practice. You don't see it a lot. I think Turner gets leveled. Fight for possession. Acevedo is there. And jostles his way out of it. Big ground ball by Acevedo. Gio Accardo in front, slips it and scores. And Accardo ties it up. His third goal in the last two games. 2-2, two -two, late in the first. Yeah, this is a great look by Waxer, and, and Accardo just does a nice yeah. job of sliding behind the defense. When you're five on four, again, we talk about it not being something you practice a lot. You're, you're used to a certain man down defense, and, and it looked like Massapequa just lost track of Accardo, and good eyes by Waxer who kind of carries the defense over and Accardo slips behind in a nice slick finish. 
And of course, you mentioned all these lacrosse families out there. We're seeing the Wieserek brothers, uh, Spolina, obviously mentioned, but of course, the Accardos as well. The, uh, the third member, of course, Gio, the youngest, uh, really growing before everyone's eyes over the last two games. And another uh, big ground ball score, from uh, Weisbeck. He does such a good job of it in traffic. Yeah, as long as they get power. Why get to Tyler Burns? I'll give Brody Waxer the assist. That's his second assist of the season. Final five seconds. Massapequa with trying to get a shot off, but it goes over the stick of Weigen. And that stops the clock with 1.3 seconds remaining. Where's the ball? Oh, here we go, 33 in the bottom. Just one more dotting of the T's and crossing of the I's. And Cawley sends it into the next county. And that does it. 12 minutes in the books. We're tied at two. Massapequa and Syosset on the Varsity Media Sports Network. High school sports fans, Varsity Media Pass is the exclusive live stream partner of Nassau County Playoffs. For semifinal and championship coverage of boys and girls lacrosse, softball, and baseball, head to varsitymediapass.com to order. Varsity Media is the home for New York high school sports. Are you a local business looking for new and creative ways to promote your company? Varsity Media offers affordable rates that can get your message across to a demographic of 18 to 54 years of age. Our follower base across social media is over 50,000 strong and our viewership numbers per game are in the thousands. Don't blow your advertising budget on old staples like TV and radio media. Reach out to Varsity Media to get the best bang for your buck. Welcome you back to the Varsity Media Sports Network. Syosset and Massapequa tied at two as we begin the second quarter. He's Tom Rooney. I'm John Perez. And four goals, four different goal scorers as Massapequa was led by Joey Diesso and Max Ziegler, Gio Accardo, and David Disqui for Syosset. And uh, what we thought would happen, a low-scoring first quarter, but uh, good defensive efforts, a lot of penalties, um, some highs, some lows. That's what these two teams expect. Yeah, I think you saw a lot of uh, a lot of energy early, right? a lot of excitement, some sloppy play. That Guys wanted to make plays. So kind of settled in a little bit. We, we thought we'd have some penalties with some physicality and things like that, and we had some of that as well. Yeah, Opening faceoff, it's Owen Acevedo and Noah Weigand as Weigand scoops it up. Weigand with a 56% faceoff percentage this year as the shot goes wide, stick comes ajar. Those were level. Yeah, and there's... Uh, you know, Ryan Weiserick again just making his presence felt in the middle of the field, coming off the wing and getting a shot, shot opportunity. Mass Pico rolls out their, their first line middies again, and you yeah, know, this is the first offensive possession they've kind of had in a while. I think they'll be patient and, right, you know, try you, to man. find uh, Gargiulo here. Mass Pequa, a team that won seven games a year ago, finished seven and eight, three and three in Class A play, lo losing to Fort Washington in the playoffs, looking for their first LIC title since 2019. And of course, playing in the Power Conference this year that Mike Draper says he's all for. And I think a lot of the coaches have really liked playing the Power Conference because it doesn't affect their non-conference schedule traditionally. Tyler Burns has to come out and scoop it up. Yeah, we talked in the opener about them just being a little bit more careful with the ball and, you know, less turnovers. And, you know, Mass Pequa right now is uh, just a little sloppy with the ball. Here's Joey Diesso opened up the scoring. And he plays catch with Rocco Spolina. Tyler Burns fakes the pass. And it finds its way under the stick of Fazio. Yeah, Tyler Burns is a guy that Mastrico has to get going. He can really shoot it. Hasn't had a lot of opportunities yet today. Here's Jack Gargiulo. He's really gotten off to a hot start as Burns swings it around. And it's Nolan Wieserek. A 
up top. Gargiulo steps into it over the crossbar, and it'll stay with Massapequa. Yeah, that's 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 a good look at, at the kind of shooter Gargiulo is. Really big time shot. Looks like Saatsic jumped in his zone here a little bit, trying to throw off a little rhythm of uh, of Massapequa. And once again, it'll stay with the Chiefs. Yeah, the danger of going zone is just that you, you, you sort of allow a team to possess and get some good looks, you know, if you don't get some knockdowns. It's another good look by Gargiulo. You know, Piqua here right now is going six on the outside. They're not putting anybody inside, so they're kind of outnumbering the zone at certain spots. Here's Burns. Steps into it and right into the stick of Weisenfeld, making the save. Yeah, nice job by Weisenfeld, you know, being in a good position. Burns can really heat it up. That, that, that was a good save. Back the other way, off the long pole, Evan Ostrager lost it. Massapequa galloping into the open field. Burns slips it in front. Another save, Weisenfeld robbing Nolan Wieserek wide. And another one, two for the price of one for the sophomore Weisenfeld. Two great saves right there. Holding his ground, two one-on-ones. Ironically, both on the Weiserick brothers. Back the other way, here's Cauley, a drive and a bouncing shot. Skips high. What a sequence. Well, this is a Sayasa team that has just been looking for inspiration to get themselves um, back into these games and some energizing. Well, how about their keeper? Trying to spark them defensively and transfer it over on offense. Yeah, first he has the save on Burns. Then we come back the other way off the turnover. He has the save on Nolan Wieserek. And then he has the save on Ryan Wieserek. So nice job by Weisenfeld being good position, good hand speed, keeping Syosset in this game. Here's Nick Turner. Lost it. A couple of 44s going at each other as Turner kicks it up front. Ginsburg. Takes a spill and a whistle. Stay with Sayasa. Yeah, Wieserick is a tough matchup up there. Turner has played well early in the played season, a couple games, uh, a couple goals against Southside. And uh, that's that's a good matchup against two good players right there. That's people out shooting Sayasa, 12 to eight. Just squee up top. Turner and Ostrager, or check that, Acevedo. Disque, the drive inside. In front, Waxer, and deny Gennady. Yeah, nice skip by Disque, and uh, Waxer's shot got, got deflected before it got to uh, Gennady. Disque on a back pedal. Five minutes gone by in the second quarter, and Gennady meeting Disque at the summit. Uh, crease violation, either way. Good talent by Gennady, and now Massapequa goes up the field. Yeah, nice job by Hink there playing defense on Disque. We obviously know how, how difficult that can be. Um, and, uh, you know, Gennady just holds his pipe and, and, and it makes a good save. Something to just keep an eye on, John, after that save. Sahasa jumped into uh, a borderline 10-man ride. It looks like they're trying to just find ways to disrupt Mass Pico in the clearing game. Trying to knife inside, that's Fazio. And then another turnover. Yeah, Mass Pico player stepped in the crease. And this is the kind of stuff that Draper was talking about, you know, just too many turnovers, too many inconsistent uh, plays. You know, there's no reason to step in the crease and it's one of those uh, spots that really hurt you and this is where Disque is really good. Yeah, you bet. Disque, his second goal of the game and Sayase pulls in front. We saw this in the first game of the year. Any kind of unsettled situation, Disque is just so dangerous. He's so big and fast and physical, just each checks. And he, and he catches this clear up by the midline. You know, he's playing a lot of attack right now. He's a future, I think, college midfielder. And you see it, he runs through one check, through two checks, and it, it really has no effect on him. He's so strong. 
You can see why John Hopkins loves him and one of the top programs in the nation. And back the other way, it's Spolina. Joe Fazio. Yes, yeah, so last time Mass Pico had the ball, they they were trying to get Jack Gargiulo loose a little bit. Sayasa had gone zone. It looks like they're back to man. Um, when they've gone man, they've done a lot of invert or, or two man behind. And it looks like they're going to bring Gargiulo behind. Wieserek working on Jake Agliano. Agliano, the two-sport athlete, also plays hockey as well. Yeah, remember, Gargiulo was a, an attackman last year. He's very comfortable behind the cage. Um, he's being guarded by Chase Yaris right now, who's an LSM, who normally is guarding above the cage. So we'll see if there's uh, an advantage here. Quick to slide. Nice job by Gagliano on the double. Huge dive by Ostranger, and he awards possession for, for Syosset. Yep, little adventure in uh, clearing right now. Got Tyler. a flag down. Two flags are down as here's Spolina, slips in front, and Weiserek scores. Nolan Weiserek ties the game. Fantastic finish, his fourth goal of the year. And tied at three. Yes, yeah, so your attack right now for Mass Pequa is freshman, freshman, sophomore. But these kids can play really high IQ, and it starts with Tyler Burns picking up the loose ball. He gets checked, but Rocco Spolina picks up the ball. Right away, you see his head is up. He's looking. He knows that in these situations that people are open. So it's a little bit of that scramble drill. And Weiserich this time does a good job of faking and finishing on Weisenfeld. He learned his lesson. Yeah, so you got to love Weiserich. Even though he's only a freshman, uh, obviously, you can tell he comes from a good lacrosse family, good program, and uh, using those moves there, but a good adjustment as well. Under five minutes to play in the first half. We're tied at three as it's Ostrager and Weigand, and wait for the thumbs up, and we're set to play. And another infraction against Syosset. Here come the Chiefs. Yeah, good, good matchup at the faceoff X, and uh, Acevedo just a little early, a little anxious, trying to get his team uh, possession. Um, you know, listen, if you're Mass Pico right now, you you you, you kind of feel like you've gotten some good looks. Weisenfeld's made some saves, but you, you have some guys that can really sling it. I think you just keep going to uh, your big guns and testing this zone. Garjul to Burns. Spolino and Burns playing catch. 4.15 to go in the second. Two teams have gone tit for tat. Another flag is out. Yeah, nice job by Gargiulo. And it finds its way in. Joey Diesso, I think he was trying to pass it. It found its way on net, and sometimes it's your day. Better lucky than good. The second goal of the game for Diesso, and the Chiefs pull in front. Yeah, listen, Joey, in Newsday tomorrow, it's going to say goal. No one, you know, no one has to know any different. Um, listen, when, you, when you're playing with, uh, with, with free money with the flag down, you could take a, a chance inside. That's exactly what he does. And, you know, these things happen. You know, that's, that's a tough one on Weisenfeld. Um, but if you're Mass Pequa, you got a man up face. Last time they had this, Acevedo did a nice job of winning the face off for Syosset. Second straight faceoff that's uh, been halted, but Syasa takes over. Syasa just trying to kill off the penalty. One man is already out as Zeng comes back on. Shot whistles wide, and Pico takes over. Yeah, a little ambitious there by Disqui. Um, He's just so confident every time he gets his hands free. It's a good shot. It just, you know, just a, just a tad high. 
Back the other way, it's a long pole. Ryan Weiserek. And a timeout taken by Aspiqua. With 3.30, or 3.23 to go in the second quarter. And um, take a look at, um, well, at least the Syosset side. And, you know, this is a program that's uh, been pretty, uh, doing pretty well over the last uh, 23 years with John Calabria. And you see uh, the numbers speak for themselves. I know where yeah, listen, since right around uh, 2000, um, this program has really taken off and, uh, you know, you see it in, in Nassau championships, a couple Long Island championships, um, the, the amount of All-Americans, you know, guys like Mac O'Keefe and Lucas Kotler and Alex Kincannon and, you know, uh, uh, Accardo. There's just so, so many guys have come through this program, um, really have done a nice job here. And, and, you know, the community lacrosse was not big. You know, it just wasn't something that was you know, all that important, and uh, that's something that Brian O'Keefe and a few other guys have really uh, established here in town. And meanwhile, on the other side, um, Massapequa with a 4-3 lead now with uh, three and a half to play, and there you see the numbers there as well. How about the 33 current college players? Yeah, listen, this uh, Massapequa program has been strong for a long time. You see two New York State titles, and, um, you know, they, they really almost year in, year out have had just quality kids and a quality program. And so play resumes. 20 seconds to go on the Will Cauley minute penalty. Good stick there by Chase Yaris. Yeah, it looked like Mass Peak was trying to set something up. And anytime you throw off the rhythm of a play, well, maybe it didn't throw it off, John. Can you throw off Joey Dieso? It's his first half. He's got the hat trick. As Piqua with a 5-3 lead late in the first half. Yeah, you saw him trying to set up this play and uh, good knockdown by Yaris, but Weiserich gathers and they get the ball behind and I think it's going to be uh, Rocco Spolina on the feed. And, you know, this is underrated. He throws it right into a stick, which allows him just to catch and shoot. That accuracy... Um, you know, we see the skill level of Rocco and, uh, you know, for a ninth grader to be the, the point guy in a, in a man up tells you a lot about how they feel about him. So you're right, Spolina the assist and third straight face off resulting uh, in an infraction and Massapequa starts it off. This is Matt Pettis. Yeah, and these, these last few minutes of a half are always big minutes. You know, you want to win these last three, four minutes because it just changes the way halftime feels and your, your game plan for the second half. And Massapequa now, you know, with, with two quick goals and now possession, you just get the feeling that this is either a really big stop for Syosset or it could be a real momentum goal for Massapequa. And so a few times, too, for... Syosset scored a goal late in the second quarter against Southside and then was just outplayed by the Cyclones in the third quarter and never really had enough to overcome Southside in the fourth quarter, even though that was probably one of their best quarters of the game. Yeah, you know, this game is a game of runs. Nice feed, nice finish. Yeah, and there's Rocco Spolina. Had the feed before, now the finish. 6-3 Chiefs on the road. You know, we saw Ziegler earlier. I think we're going to see it on replay. Get a get a feed and and finish from Pettis, and yes, now you're going to see Ziegler with a nice Rocco job. Spolina. And all Rocco Spolina does is just do a little backdoor right there, catches his man looking upfield, and catch and finish. Spolina, that's his second goal of the year as Piqua, with four unanswered goals, taking a 6-3 lead. Two thirteen left in the second. And Acevedo, I think, has violated on the last three face-offs, so he's got to figure this out. Well, no violation there, and Maspequa scoops it up anyway. Ground ball, Weiserek, and a whistle. And Maspequa takes a quick timeout. Another ground ball for Weiserek. Well, coming up on the varsity uh, media sports network, we've got a ton of lacrosse, especially a lot of power conference lacrosse. Uh, Syosset takes on Cold Spring Harbor next Wednesday, and then uh, Southside Garden City. 
Then we how about the girls? Victor coming down from Section 5 to take on Cold Spring Harbor. And then over the weekend, Del Barton against St. Anthony's. Uh, a lot of great matchups. Obviously, it goes without saying, the best rivalry on Long Island. St. Anthony, Chaminade, April 10th. And uh, if you're a lax fan, you'll love a hotbed for high school lacrosse. If you're a college lacrosse fan, why not watch your future stars today uh, on Varsity Media? Yeah, obviously, all of these games are really, really good. That St. Anthony Shamanar game is loaded with Division One talent. Um, and I think, to your point, I think there will be college guys watching that game. And, um, you know, really all those games loaded with talent. Really, really great place to grow up and play lacrosse. And, you know, there's a lot of kids sitting at home right now watching this game, you know, waiting for their opportunity to play on varsity media. See, that was a, another 10-man ride by by Syosset. Good job by Mass Peak. We're just taking their time and breaking it. Well, and how do you break the 10-man ride? Like, what do you want to see out of Mass Peak to do so? Well, you, you got to identify who's who's got the goalie and, and kind of work that side. The goalie's only going to stay on him for so long before he gets back in his cage. And you're kind of working the middies back and forth on and off sides and trying to find that guy who's got to stay back. Um, and that's what they did. They did a really nice job. And now, you know, here you are with a minute and a half to go. And, and you know, Coach Draper talked about possessions, right, and getting good quality possessions and being a little bit more careful with the ball. You know, this is one of those spots you'd love to see your team bring it down to about 30 seconds and uh, get a good look and not force anything. Back the other way, Weiserek over everyone, Garjulo. Yeah, Gargiulo fixing the stick back there, but this is a spot right now where it looks like Syosset's going to jump in their zone. If I'm Gargiulo, I'm trying to find a spot where I can let one loose. He's got a big time, big time shot. You got Burns on the other side, the lefty, and this is going to probably allow them to to get what they want as far as time wise and and, and shot. Joey Diesso, the player of the first half for Massapequa with three goals. Rocco Spolina scoring the last one. Half a minute to play in the second. Yeah, plenty of time here, especially, you know, with a lead. You really want to take your time. Nice look. And Fazio drills it. Joe Fazio, someone who loves to invert, get up and down the field. Well, he's on the scoreboard. 7-3 Massapequa with under 20, uh, 24 seconds to go in the second. Yeah, great cut. You know, sometimes in the zone you can kind of stand around, but our... But our guy, uh, Joey uh, Diesso, with, with a really nice feed and hits the cutter, and, and nothing really Weisenfeld can do there. Aspeak was outshot. Sayas at 17 11 in the first half, and really asserted themselves offensively. They should have the final possession. Yeah, kind of a big violation here if they can get a good shot off. So 20 seconds, don't got to go super fast, but you got to make sure that you uh, understand the scoreboard and the time right now. You're at 10, good time to cut if you're a Mass Pequa guy. Wiserek to Wigand, and he scores. It's all the Chiefs all the time. 8-3 Mass Pequa as Wigand finds the back of the net. Yeah, that's, that's a little bit of a backbreaker right there for Syosset. Weizrich does a nice job of stepping away and feeding. And uh, Weigand, you know, don't call him a Fogo. You know, he faces off, but he didn't get off. He stayed on. Does a nice job of eating a check and, uh, you know, getting that shot off. Well, you're right about uh, not winning the face off there. And this people will make some pay. Weiserek scores uh, the assist on that, fly, on that last tally. Oh, he's got time. Here's Wigand. Has to let it go and skips it wide. As it doesn't fall, but that does it for the first half. 
Massapequa has been lighting it up. They've scored six unanswered goals. Joey Diesso with a hat trick, and they take an 8-3 lead going into the half. We'll step aside when we come back. We'll recap the first half to get you ready for the second half right here on the Varsity Media Sports Network. Inside the 10 to the end zone. Oh, he's got a wide open receiver. A.J. Duff. High school sports fans, Varsity Media Pass is the exclusive live stream partner of Nassau County Playoffs. For semifinal and championship coverage of boys and girls lacrosse, softball, and baseball, head to varsitymediapass.com to order. Varsity Media is the home for New York high school sports. Are you a local business looking for new and creative ways to promote your company? Varsity Media offers affordable rates that can get your message across to a demographic of 18 to 54 years of age. Our follower base across social media is over 50,000 strong and our viewership numbers per game are in the thousands. Don't blow your advertising budget on old staples like TV and radio media. Reach out to Varsity Media to get the best bang for your buck. Hey sports fans, did you know Varsity Media live stream broadcasts get viewed by college coaches nationwide? Through our announcer's storytelling and insight on your athletes, we can help your players get an edge on college recruiting. Find out how by reaching out to Varsity Media today, 516-403-2050 or email ben at varsitymedia.net. Looking to grow your business on social media? Let Varsity Media help you. With over 50,000 followers across our platform, sponsor a segment during the broadcast and share it on social media the next day. It's the best of both worlds as you'll get thousands of plays and your ad will live on the broadcast forever. Contact us today for sponsorship packages by calling 917-470-0864 or emailing varsitymediasponsors at gmail.com. Did you just have the best athletic year of your life and now you want to show it off to college coaches? Well, let Varsity Media help you. Varsity Media's college recruiting videos show off your unique skills to help you land a spot on the team of your dream school. We'll provide music, spot shadow effects, and a link to send to your next coach. Contact us today for more information. Don't rely on word of mouth or cold emails. Let Varsity Media help you take your game to the next level. Feel like your game film is too stagnant and not providing you with the insight that your coaches had hoped for? Varsity Media offers game film to help your coaches develop a game plan to execute on game day. Our current clients love the Varsity Media difference, which includes more insightful camera angles and a speedy upload process. Start building your championship team today with award-winning individuals at Varsity Media. High school sports fans, are you following Varsity Media on our YouTube channel? For the best coverage of New York high school sports, make sure you head to youtube.com slash varsity media. Three easy steps. First, hit that like button, and then be sure to subscribe. And finally, tap that yellow bell to be notified of all of our upcoming sportscasts. Thank you for following Varsity Media on YouTube. Varsity Media is offering a video folder that you can customize to meet your needs. A photo of your athlete can be elegantly placed in the front panel, 
Essential statistics with a biography can be printed on the inside panel, and videos can be downloaded and viewed on an LCD screen for as long as two hours. The attractive video folder can be placed on a coffee table and instantly becomes a conversation starter. Order your video folder today by logging into varsitymediapass.com and click catalogs, or give us a call at 516-403-2050. When it comes to advertising, are you hitting the right audience? Why waste your time with television or a free print publication that's given out at a local deli? Varsity Media has your back. With a following of over 50,000 and a local demographic ranging between the ages of 18 and 54 years old, it's time to get that return on investment. Plus, here's the best part. Your ad lives forever on our YouTube page. And with a large on-demand audience, it's a grand slam to advertise with Varsity Media. Varsity Media offers live streaming services for any sport. With human beings behind the camera, you can expect the proper coverage angles during each game. We offer customizable options such as live scoreboard, multiple cameras, instant replay, graphics, and even announcers. Find out how you can save $100 off a live stream package with Varsity Media by calling 516-403-2050 or email Ben at Varsity Media. Media.net. Did you know Varsity Media now offers action photography for all sporting events? Available for individuals or teams, we'll send dedicated photographers down to field level to capture your best moments. Our rates are affordable and our photos will leave you with lasting memories for a lifetime. Contact us today, mention this ad, and get $25 off your first order. Email ben at varsitymedia.net or call 516-403-2050. Time here on the Varsity Media Sports Network. Massapequa looking to stay hot as they have an 8-3 lead over Syosset. We'll take a quick break when we come back. Second half coming up next on the Varsity Media Sports Network. Inside the 10 to the end zone. Oh, he's got a wide open receiver. A.J. Duff. High school sports fans, Varsity Media Pass is the exclusive live stream partner of Nassau County Playoffs. For semifinal and championship coverage of boys and girls lacrosse, softball, and baseball, head to VarsityMediaPass.com to order. Varsity Media is the home for New York high school sports. Are you a local business looking for new and creative ways to promote your company? Varsity Media offers affordable rates that can get your message across to a demographic of 18 to 54 years of age. Our follower base across social media is over 50,000 strong and our viewership numbers per game are in the thousands. Don't blow your advertising budget on old staples like TV and radio media. Reach out to Varsity Media to get the best bang for your buck. Welcome you back to Syosset High School. It's Massapequa with an 8-3 lead here on the road, a local rivalry game. Well, in that first half, a lot of goals, and of course we had one speedy goal as well. It's time for our speedy play of the game presented by Speed Island, and we take you back to the first half, and it was the first quarter, late in the first quarter. Syosset needed a goal in the worst way, and they go to one of their top players as well, David Disquay, who we had to slow it down. That's how fast he was going, Tom Rooney as Disquay tied the game at one and nice moves all around. Yeah, we've seen this in the early season a lot from David Disquay. Uh, super fast, uh, Speedy Island would be very uh, proud of, of the way David ran that, ran that right down the alley, absorbing checks and not losing any speed as he deposited in the back of the net. Improve your speed today with Onyx Salva and the gang located in Garden City. Book a session today at www.speedislandny. So just about a minute till we start the 
Um, the second half, there you see the look at uh, Massapequa. They're a little bit exuberant, a little bit more uh, headstrong over on that Syosset side. What was John Calabria telling his team? Well, I, I think it's we obviously need to clean up, uh, you know, a few things offensively, force some balls, took some uh, maybe a few ill-advised shots. But I think the other thing he's saying is, guys, it's only five goals. Uh, you know, first game of the year, I think David Desquee had five goals in the, in the first quarter. Like, they can score five. This is not some insurmountable lead. It's, it's a matter of playing their game and kind of chipping away at the lead. Meanwhile, on the other side for Massapequa, uh, it all looked good, but I'm sure there are some areas that Michael Draper wants to shore up. As a coach, Tom Rooney, what do you want to see out of Massapequa going into the second half? Well, you, you don't want to let up. You don't want to just sort of feel good with a five-goal halftime lead. It's a four-quarter game. It's not a two-quarter game. You know, keep doing the things we're doing. We're sharing the ball, a lot of assisted goals that we've seen, and handle the ride of Syosset. If they can clear the ball and get into their offense, we see that they've been successful. Owen Acevedo and Michael Wigan. Wigan, a goal scorer in that first half as well. Joey Diesel led the way with three goals. And now Massapequa will start it off with Jack Gargiulo. He was one of our impact players. He has not scored yet, but still plenty of time left. And now working hard and tries to slip it behind the net. We'll stay with the Chiefs. Yeah, first time we're seeing uh Disquee play some uh, some midi here, play some D midi, and I and I and I like it. You know, try to get him maybe out in the break, you know, off of uh, off save or a turnover, um, and he happens to be an excellent D midi. Um, and you're gonna I think you're gonna see this Syosset defense kind of extend a little bit here. You know, they were in a zone a few times. I thought Massapequa handled the zone, so I think now you'll get, you know, a look at some pressure from from Syosset. Joe Fazio gets around Disquee. Slings it. This is Gargiulo. And now up top to Dieso. Yeah, Dieso is, uh, you know, a guy right now that's got the hot hand. You know, he had a really nice first half. He's got, you know, just a shiftiness about him. You get a deflection on that. But Dieso's been a good guy to go to, especially with a short stick matchup. Behind the cage, Nolan Weiserek. Weiserek with a goal early in the second quarter. Slips inside, goes wide, and there's Rocco Spolina picking up the GB. Big hit from behind. And now Weisenfeld having difficulty corralling, but there's Syosset rallying over, and of course David Disquay. Yeah, you know, good players always seem to be around the ball, and don't be surprised if you see, oh, well, we're going to have a penalty. I was going to say, don't be surprised if you see this gray just kind of take this. Oh, well, he took the penalty. Goes off the stick. Uh, Rosenfeld. Yeah, if you're, if you're Mass Peak, well, this is not how you want to start the half. I mean, you, you have a five goal lead, not a great possession. Um, and then you foul on the clear, and you're going to give Syosset a chance where they've already, you know, cashed in once today, um, to, you know, to really get their offense going if, if they can score right here and cut the lead in half. So an unsportsmanlike against Jack Arjulo as Mike Draper gets the explanation. That's a penalty on number 13. Unsportsmanlike conduct, one minute. So it's a, it's a locked in, unreleasable penalty. You saw John Tuttle, the referee there, lock it in. And so with un, you know, an unreleasable penalty, this can really help out Syosset here, Tom. Yeah, you know, if you get a chance to uh, you know, score early, you're gonna get multiple you know, attempts at your man up. And you know, again, I, I mentioned earlier, this was a man up that was was got some really good looks at Southside, and with this kid, you're always going to get good looks. Nice. Gennady scoops up the short hop. Nice save by Gennady. Back across midfield, Ryan Weiserek. Yeah, what what a weapon Ryan Weiserek is in the middle of the field. Most teams on a on a man down clear try to get it to the short stick, and Massapequa gets it to their 
their big uh, LSM defenseman, Weiserich, and he just easily handles pressure. Yeah, and so Massapequa calls a timeout. Still 23 seconds left on the unsportsmanlike. Well, we were looking at the Massapequa uh, program by the numbers, but they've had, like we mentioned, 33 players playing college right now. Well, here are some of the faces and, of course, some of the best in the nation. Yeah, I mean, we'll start with Petrak. He's just a tremendous face-off man. Had a huge impact up at Cornell. Kenny Brower actually played earlier today, multiple-time All-American defenseman at Duke. Garrett Gibbons started his career at Maryland. He's doing a fifth year at Stony Brook, just an overall midi. Pat Radomski, a freshman who's starting. You don't see that a lot at any level, starting up at Siena. And Sam Lutfi, who's had a really nice career. It says St. John's. His brother, Jack, is at St. John's. Sam is at Hofstra. He's a fifth year there. These are guys that have all, you know, obviously had excellent careers at Massapequa, but have impacted the college game as well. Yeah, no, and it's good to see just Massapequa bringing it to the next level. And, of course, they've got four college commits right now with uh, Nick Hink off to Nazareth, uh, Nick Margiata, uh, at Wingate, Matt Pettis, U Albany, and uh, Ryan Weiser at UMass Amherst. Yeah, and if, if you're Syosset right now, this is, I, I like the timeout by Draper. You know, you don't want to see, uh, you know, Syosset get a quick turnover and, and then get back on the offensive end. But if you're Syosset, you'd love to cause a turnover right here, and Cauley's the right guy on the ball. Yeah, Cauley there, and there's Fazio saved by Weisenfeld. And Cauley the clear. Disquay with some where, numbers. This is where he loves to go. Drives and scores. We saw him use the wheels in the first half. He scores his second goal of the game. And that makes it 8-4, to four, Massapequa. He is so dangerous in the open field. You know, it starts off with Fazio gets a good look. Nice job by Weisenfeld holding his post and, and gets the save. And then Cauley would have really heads up play here to get the ball to Disquay quickly off the ground. And you see David Disqui. I mean, this kid just flies. And then with the right hand, he's a big time lefty shooter. And we talked about how much he worked on his game in the opening broadcast. And you see it right there with the right hand. A nice short change, and that's his third goal of the game as uh, Syosset with a good uh, start off to the third quarter. And now uh, a fight for another GB. Chase Yaris there, flag is out opposite field as uh, Acevedo took the brunt of what could be a slash. As Piqua picks it up, and a penalty coming. Well, I, I said it on the previous flag. This is not what Mass Piqua wants. You do not want to put this group man up. It wasn't the traditional way to get the man up goal, but it turned into a situation where they were able to capitalize on it. And now they're going to get another one. And an 8-3 lead in high school, you know, it, it can go really, really fast. And I'm sure that was the message at halftime. And, you know, right now, 8-4 with a chance, you know, to go man up and, and make this an 8-5 game. You're going to see this game change dramatically, the feel of it, if they can score right here. Adam LaMandola called for the cross check. So two-minute penalty. And you're right. This is a good opportunity for Syosset. I believe it's unreleasable too, right, uh, Tom, I believe? Yeah, I, I didn't see the ref call it. I, I, it definitely, uh, we have two minutes up on the scoreboard, so that would be an unreleasable penalty. It must have been up in the head. So this is a great opportunity right now for this man up unit. Disqui, Waxer, double teamed, and taken away. Big loose ball. And who wants it more, pops out. It's a foot race, Matt Pettis. Oh, what a ground ball by Wieserich. Wieserich the dish. And a flag out around midfield. Tyler Burns. Now Burns and Waxer. So there's a, a flag on the field right now, so it's obviously on Syosset. So if you're Massapequa, you want to take as much time as you can before you go to the cage because you can kill off this unreleasable penalty. And if you're Syosset, that's a, that's a tough missed opportunity on a two-minute unreleasable. You, you, you know, had a good look, just couldn't really handle it inside, maybe a little bit of a force. And now you got to chase and try to get the ball out of, uh, looks like uh, Gargiulo Stick, who seems like he can run all day. Yeah, and still 40 seconds left on that penalty, and you're right, Bill. 
Take it all the way down. This is another guy that can run for days, Rocco Spolina. Yeah, how do you like the freshman handling the pressure? That's a really good job. And there's Pettis, a really good athlete. This is a nice job by Matt Peacock, just killing time. Talk about through. textbook, just basically knocking off a buck 45 of this penalty. Yeah, and, and even better for them, they got two short sticks on the ball, which is really not what you want to double with. Um, you know, and, and this just exhausting the Syosset defenders as well. And Nick Turner is just going to come off trying to get another defender. Two seconds and one, and we're back. Right. Uh, even strength, and now uh, Syosset ball. Yeah, is this going to go against David Disquay? Unnecessary roughness against Disquay. So I, I didn't see the foul. I did see the flag. So, you know, Syosset has a man up, a two-minute unreleasable in an 8-4 game with a chance to cut to three. They don't take advantage. Mass Pequot does a really good job of killing the penalty, and now they're going to have a full minute uh, of their own man up, which last time they, they ran this, they were successful. So Mass Pico ran this set last time. They had Rocco Spolina top center. Be at the <laughs> he threw it and kind of wheeled behind, be the and, and they, they overloaded the left-hand side with him and Burns, and he found, <laughs> I believe it was Joey Dieso on a little cut. Yeah, we'll see what they play now with Jack Arjulo. What about stepping into it? And Burns swings it around. Here's Spolina. Yeah, just playing a little catch here, trying to find a good uh, a good look. Sass does a nice job of taking away the, the initial uh, play that Pequot wants to run, but they still got numbers here. Throw everyone towards the midfield. And Sayasa ball with 24 seconds to go on the penalty. And now another flag is out. Brody Waxer. Yeah, guy, guys just guy, losing their composure a little bit in these these moments where the ball's on the ground and it's a little unsettled. Waxer's doubled. Waxer trying to fight inside, and then knife from behind by Ryan Weiserak. Acevedo. Good move, the slip. Waxer. Turner upended. And so here's Disquay. Yeah, Sach is just going to wait. They're going to get Ostreger off the field and try to get an offensive player on. And that offensive player is Gio Accardo. Here's Disquay. Disquay backing down. Nick Hank coming on. Disquay up top, Turner. I think if you're Syosset, you, you do take your time here. This this could be a, a, a nice and one if you can score and then go on a man-up face-off. So this is an important time. possession. At least every time I do it. Starting to see a drizzle on the field, and here's Owen Acevedo. Four and a half to play. Just squeeze the shot, chops through. And out of play, and now finally the penalty uh, should be called. As that looks to be Jack Gargiulo coming off. Let's see what the call is here. Delay a game on uh, Massapequa. I don't know on the, on the call they made him roll the ball away or, or whatever it is. Uh, but a little, little sloppy here in the, in the middle of this game. Man ups back and forth, just nobody really capitalizing. but. Syosset again now with, with, a, with a man up that feels pretty important at this stage of the game. And Tom, I'm sure as a coach, this keeps you up at night, the amount of penalties uh, committed by both teams. 
Yeah, if you're Massapequa, you're 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 up at one point. It was up five, and you you're you're fouling. You know, this is not exactly how you uh, keep leads. Uh, Squeak Turner thought about hoisting, and then was disrupted. And off the ground ball. That was that was uh, Michael Giannotti. Yeah, Giannotti out of the cage. Really good job. This is Hank. Hank is a nice player. He's done a nice job one on one with with this squee and uh, that's a really nice job by Massapequa clearing that man down, starting with Giannotti getting out of his cage to gather a ground ball. There's Tyler Burns. Off to Gargiulo. Yeah, so Massapequa kills off the penalty. If you're Syosset, you're, you're kicking yourself a little bit here. They had a bunch of opportunities but what they really need is they need a stop. You know, that we have more than a quarter to play. It's only four goals. You know, you're getting some calls, you're getting some looks. Got to get a stop here. Jack Garzullo. Working with Chase Yaris. Under three minutes to play in the third. Yeah, Fazio's got Disqui dis behind. Normally you have a short stick, it's a great matchup. The squeeze a very good on the ball defender. Slips there. Stays with it and then forces the errant pass. Good defense by Disquay. And a hustle for possession, Sayasa takes over. We got a little uh, disagreement amongst the refs whether it was shot or a, a pass. And they're gonna call it a pass. I'm good. So now Josh Weisenfeld, six saves in the first half. Off to Evan Ostrager. Here's Ocardo, working with Hank. Ocardo, speeding inside, goes down, flag is out. Ball is loose and a 30 second penalty upcoming against the Chiefs. It should go to Hank and another EMO for Syosset. Well, stop me if you've heard this before, John, but if you're Massapequa, you gotta stop fouling. I mean, this is the fourth, I believe, foul in this quarter alone. Just keeping Syosset in the game, giving him opportunities. If anything, you're just denying your offense the ball and not giving you guys a chance to extend this lead. I thought last time they were man up, the squee had a chance to step in. He, he chose to feed it inside. Don't be surprised if he gets uh, his feet set to, that he won't let it go. Here's Turner. Ricardo. Disquay catch and shoot top right corner. Disquay is fourth of the game, makes it eight to five. Yeah, you just had a feeling that he was not going to leave it in the hands of anybody else on that possession. Nice little uh, play run by Syosset to uh, get him free. You're going to see a little pick play here, and Disquay just comes off it. You got a Cardo feeding. Looks like uh, Acevedo on the pick, and then Disquay, he's not going to miss from there. Yeah, good feed, and. Well, you know, Syosset might have had difficulty getting the shots off, but. They're throwing up a goose egg against Massapequa, so a better adjustment in the third quarter for Syosset. Yeah, I mean, listen, you, you almost dodged a bullet, right? In the sense that you, you haven't played well in the third quarter, but you you, you know you got some penalties go to, going your way, and now you cut the lead to three, you have the ball, you get a face-off win. Not a bad spot to be in. Ginsburg lost it, Lamandola across midfield. Adam Lamandola. The feed burns. In front save, Weisenfeld. On the catch and shoot by Spolino. Yeah, nice job by Weisenfeld. That could have been a big goal to answer right away. Conrad Zeng, the defensive assignment. Here's Joey Dieso. Yeah, I, I think 
this is what gave Mass Pico a lot of success early. And uh, nice pickoff by Ostrager. Yeah, Ostrager, John Calabria says, looking for a home on defense this year. And I love what he sees on that pick. Front, Disque goes down, flag is out. Scoops it up, Disque looking for the end one and scores. How about the resilience of David Disque putting the team on his back? That makes it eight to six. It, it almost seems that if the, the uglier the play on the ground, loose ball, unsettled, the better Disque is. I mean, he is sort of dynamite in this, this open space. And a, little, a lot of this, too, is just the will, right? I mean, he's down on his knees. There's no give up. He attacks it, uses his shoulder to step in there, takes another hit, tough as nails. On the ground ball, scooped up. Sayas, it's got some time. Here's Acevedo. He's got Yaris in the front. And goes over the long pole. Out of play, and... With seven seconds left, Massapequa will look to just land the plane. And then skied up in the air. One last gas goes over Cauley. Two seconds in one, and time expires. And that does it. But Sayase starting to mount the comeback. As Pequa with an 8-6 lead headed to the fourth on the Varsity Media Sports Network. You're watching Varsity Media, New York's high school sports network. Snap more than the ball? We've got specialists for that. Jump shot, leave your knee shot? We've got specialists for that. Face down after that face off? We've got specialists for that. Orland & Cohen's top orthopedic team has specialized expertise and extensive training from the nation's premier programs in sports medicine, knee, shoulder, hip, spine, hand, foot, and ankle, so you can feel better, faster. Hey sports fans, did you know Varsity Media live stream broadcasts get viewed by college coaches nationwide? Through our announcer's storytelling and insight on your athletes, we can help your players get an edge on college recruiting. Find out how by reaching out to Varsity Media today, 516-403-2050, or email ben at varsitymedia.net. Feel like your game film is too stagnant and not providing you with the insight that your coaches had hoped for? Varsity Media offers game film to help your coaches develop a game plan to execute on game day. Our current clients love the Varsity Media difference, which includes more insightful camera angles and a speedy upload process. Start build Start of the fourth quarter, East Tom Rooney, I'm John Perez Syosset, being led by David Disqui, who's got five goals in the game, cutting an 8-3 deficit down to 8-6. Uh, Tom, David Disquay has been as good as advertised in this early season for Syosa. Yeah, I mean, you know, they came into that third quarter down 8-3, and, and Disquay puts him on his back and, you know, almost wills himself to three goals and his team back into this game. Um, Acevedo does a good job of fighting through and, and winning a few face-offs, and the Syosa defense was very good. They jumped out of the zone and, and have really put the pressure on Massapequa and, you know, Mass people fouled a lot. They didn't have the ball on offense. So, you know, this, these games always come down to, you know, the fourth quarter and, and who can kind of execute. If you're Mass Pequa, you want to get into an offense here and, and get a good look and at least possess a little bit. You haven't had the ball much this second half. Well, here's Jack Arzulo and a ton of penalties in that third quarter as well. Joe Fazio scored earlier in the game, but Syosset in that third quarter, outscoring Piqua 3-0, all thanks to David Disquay scoring all those goals. Yeah, nice job right now by the Syosset 6-on-6 defense here. Fazio the drive and the answer back. His second of the game, 9-6 Piqua. Yeah, it feels like a big goal, John. I mean, Mass Piqua had not scored in the third quarter. You know, had not played really a clean game, but uh, Fazio does a really good job. And, and the Piqua starters right there, that, that, that offense looked really crisp. 
wheeled the ball around, got a good matchup, and cleared out of space for him down the lane, and, and nobody there on Sayasa to slide. Nice, nice job by Pico there. Fazio with a great finish. Well, up to quick start, and then Acevedo just took a shot to the face. There's Ryan Rosenfeld. Working with Justin Farrell. Rosenfeld trying to create some space. You know, we haven't said Justin Farrell's name a lot um, in this game, Tom, and that's exactly what Mike Draper has to say about his defensive unit. He says if you're not saying their name, that means they're actually having a good game. There's Brody Waxer with the goal. We'll say his name. That makes it 9-7. Yeah, we talked about him in the opener about how, you know, him having to get going in order for Syasa to be successful. Um, and, and you see right there the kind of player that he can be. Does a really nice job here. Watch him just swim over the slide and get his hands free. Nice shot off, off hip on Gennady. And Sasset's able to answer right back. Waxer, 44 goals a year ago. Second of the season and now trying to spark this Sayasa comeback. That's peak was won the last two years. 7-5 a year ago, 9-5 at the end of the regular season. And 9-5 victory and, and now a talking to, to Mike Weigand. Yeah, Mr. Tuttle's not a big fan of uh, people, you know, talking back to him. Uh, I'm not sure if that was the case, but he certainly will not allow kids to get away with that. Right now, we got a big time matchup in the middle of the field. Disqui and, and Weiserich, two really, really good players. Yeah, those two go toe to toe and Long pass, Cauley tries to tap it, but over and back, and you know, Massapequa get it back with nine and a half to play. Yeah, and I think if you're Pequa here, you just gotta keep playing. You don't worry so much about the scoreboard. Quick shot, whistles wide to the left. Jack Arjulo looking to find the back of the cage. Yeah, and I, I like that, it's a good shot. You don't wanna start getting tight. It's only a two goal lead. To see Syosset now really push out and press out. Now you got the freshman Nolan Weiserich. And he scores. Scoop, there it is, Nolan Weiserich. I had a decent shot of it. You know, he, they have a couple freshmen here that are not your typical freshmen, and, and Nolan Weiserich is one of them. You, you see, he's got this big body. He's about 6'3, maybe 6'4, coach said. Um, has a chance to be really special, is what Coach Draper told us, and you can see it here. He's getting pressed out and, and, you know, trying to get, Gagliano's trying to get physical on him and he uses that pick, which just takes Gagliano off his path enough for Nolan to get his hands free and finish that, give Mass Pico a three goal lead. Right down Wigan, big hit, Disquick. And so, so I also thought that they had the foul. Refs didn't see it that way. And yeah, I think uh, we're going to get a foul on Syosset. The uh, you could hear the crowd doesn't love the call. Um, I think it's going to be a, a man up here on uh, possibly Disqui. You know, guys who know Disqui, he's a hockey player, very physical kid. Yeah, unnecessary roughness called against. This week. Yeah, I mean, listen, you know, the rules of lacrosse have changed and, and hits like that, which were probably legal, you know, a few years back and, and may even be still legal at the college level are going to get called in high school. Garjulo, Burns, and Spolina. Yeah, I like this set because you got Spolina behind just kind of picking away. You got Burns, the shooter on the wing, and Gargiulo up top. Huge man advantage for both sides. Shot deflected. Stay with Massapequa for 29 seconds. And rolling on the EMO. Yeah, if you're Massapequa, you'd like to get a good look here, but you don't want to take a bad shot just to take a shot. 
you know, it's not the worst thing in the world to uh, to hold the ball and let it go back to even and then run your offense. Quick shot, whistles wide to the right. Nolan Weiserek looking for his third of the game. And I like that. You know, shoot for a corner, shoot for a pipe, and if you miss, you back it up and, and you retain possession. Those are good man-up shots right there. It's because it's either a great goal or, or your ball on a possession. Five seconds to go. Up top, Garjulo. Penalty expires, we're back at even strength. Shot inside, rifles over the net. As that was Garjulo shaking up after the shot as well. I didn't see the uh, the hit. I, I, I was following the ball, but obviously he's in some pain, and he's, you know, uh, obviously a very good player for them, one of their top returning offensive guys. So this is not something that Mass Pico wants to see. Well, while we have a break here, we'll let you know if you're a Syosset fan. We got two more regular season games for Syosset. That'll be next Wednesday at Cold Spring Harbor, and then against Port Washington the following Wednesday. As, uh, that's a young team, uh, a big junior class for Port Washington as the Vikings and, and Syosset locking horns on the 17th of April. Meanwhile, for Massapequa, we'll see them on the road this year. That's always a big one, Massapequa at Farmingdale. Farmingdale all over Massapequa last year as well. It was a Caden Lenning game, six goals in that victory, and then Pequa takes on Southside in May. Yeah, that's the power league, right? You get a lot of really good games. And now Syosset is in full press. Nice job by you know, Spolina handling the pressure. Nice takeaway by Jake Gagliano right there. That's, if you're Syosset, that's exactly what you need. Well, you mentioned the hockey prowess, too, of Gagliano. He didn't join the team until after the practices started in the 11th of March. And uh, he's been caught up to speed, but has good instincts. Long pass, still the loose ball, and Massapequa picks up the GB, as that was Justin Farrell. Yeah, Justin Farrell, I feel like he's just been steady all day, and now it's getting a little ugly here in the middle of the field. Will calling, Conrad Zeng. And a timeout taken by Syosset. That's their first, and we'll take it with them as well. Seven minutes to play on the Varsity Media Sports Network. Inside the tent to the end zone. Oh, he's got a wide open receiver. AJ Duff. Get out of the way! Dante Torres! Syosset High School, Massapequa with a 10-7 lead for the hometown Syosset squad. He's Tom Rooney, I'm John Perez, and Tom, uh, Massapequa doing a good job defensively at times with both of these teams. A lot of penalties, not the crispest of passing, but uh, a lot of passion and play uh, in a big rivalry game. Yeah, you can, you can feel the rivalry, right? We've had a lot of penalties and a lot of back and forth, and, you know, Discreet put him on his back in the third quarter to get Syosset back in this game. Brody Waxer with a big goal in the middle of that fourth quarter. Um, and, and, you know, this game is still hanging in the balance here. Syosset has done a good job on, on pressing out and taking the ball away. And I think you'll see that the rest of the way. So Mespeak was going to have to handle that. And then the other piece is who else is going to score here for Syosset? You know, I, I, I think they're going to make it really hard for David Discreet to get the ball. Um, you know, so you're going to have to look to Waxer and Turner and some of these other guys to make this happen. Disque on a right inside. Second game this year that he scored five goals. There's number five in Ryan Rosenfeld. And Rosenfeld out of bounds. Good job by Justin Farrell, creating a wall along that sideline. Yeah, I'm impressed with Justin Farrell. Been sort of very quietly, he's had a good game. Just, just kind of does everything right. And now you got this 10-man clear. Um, oh, good, good check by Disqui. Good job the other way, Pettis. Yeah. 
Pettison's a really good athlete. Swings it near side, Weiserek. And Draper seen enough, he calls a timeout. What were you seeing there uh, that you believe Draper called the timeout? I, I, I don't think he loved uh, the, the way they were breaking that clear. I think he was worried about possibly not getting it in the box and, and violating there. So better to get the possession, you know, talk it over. I, I think the other piece of this now is preparing for this pressure that Syosset's going to bring. You're going to see Ostrager and, and Cauley and, and Gagliano and Yaris. No matter who has, you know, the matchup, they're going to press out. Everybody else is going to lock off. Somebody from Mass Peak was going to have to run by their defender to deal with this pressure. Meanwhile, for Syosset, down three goals. Uh, just over six minutes to play. Uh, what's the message from Calabria? What adjustments do you want to see there? I, I think he's saying, guys, th there's more than enough time. Let's press out. Let's get turnovers. Let's push the pace of this game. Every time the ball has been on the ground in the offensive end, like off a of clear, it seems like almost good things have happened for Syosset. So if we can get a stop on this side and just push the pace the other way, we're going to give our offensive guys a chance. Joey Dieso got the party started in the first half. He had three goals in the first two quarters. And then since then, Syosset has come alive. David Disquay and Brody Waxer for the six total goals. but. Chiefs still in front by three. And here's Weizrak. Nice day at the office for Nolan as well. Yeah, you, 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 you love the confidence they have in the freshman. You know, he has such a big body and he can handle the pressure. Right out of the timeout, they go to him and his matchup. I'm a little surprised that Syasa didn't lock off on the matchup. behind the net and here's Fazio up top it's Burns swung around Dieso. Joey Dieso, the two sport athlete was thrown into the fire as a starting quarterback for Massapequa in their championship um, round or, or championship Long Island championship season yeah he's a kid who's comfortable with the ball in his in his hands right you know when you're a quarterback and you're directing traffic like he did you know, putting together that, that's the kind of guy you want with the ball. But again, Ostrager picks one off and you got Cauley coming the other way. Speaking of football guys, you want to have the ball. Cauley's the guy that you want. Slings it, backhanded shot, wide to the left. Giannotti with a dive. And it'll stay with Syosset, but good hustle by the Pequa keeper. Yeah. Right yeah, now, now, I think if you're Syosset, you want to get the ball to Disquee and, and just tell your other guys, play off of him. You know, if they double, he will find you and we'll get other guys. You see Turner here, his guy went and doubled. Now he's got the matchup. Good recovery by Massapequa. Starting to see the rain really come down here. And that's Syosset as Turner spins it high. Yeah, we got... Brody Waxer on the restart here. I'd like to see the little big little, try to free him up a little bit. Does a good job, goes to the question mark. Gennady with a great save. You know, it's a nice move by Waxer. Gennady just right there, answers it, and another loose ball on the carpet. There's Waxer. Now you see the rain coming down, and here comes Syosset down the field as well. Will Cauley, the drive inside. Cauley! Over the crossbar. Feels that he should have had that one back. Yeah, might have got away with uh, going through the crease there, but Syosset will take it. It even makes her ride home. Cauley and, and Ryan Weiser are very similar in that. When they pick it up with their long pole, it, they're as offensive as any, any midi out there. If you're you don't you don't mind you know taking a little bit of time to get a good look, but you do not want to drain this clock. You want to get a pretty good shot, and and then you want to jump into your clear. If you, you know jump into your ride, excuse me, if you don't get a goal, and try to force a turnover. There's Acevedo gets it back. Oh, and Acevedo finding the back of the cage. That makes it a two-goal game. It's Mass Speak with ten. I at eight. Yeah, I mentioned before, you know, get the ball to Disque and have the other guy stop. Don't look at him, right? Play off of him. You know they are going to double him, and that's exactly what Acevedo does. Just finds a little crease inside, a nice feed. 
from Desquee here, and, and you see what the, the guy's looking at him, right? There's three Mespico defenders there, and Acevedo plays off it and gets himself a goal. goal scored by number 16, Owen Acevedo. 3-11 to play in the fourth. Sayas, it's led by as much as five. And trying to storm off the rally. Yeah, big face off here. Still loose. Pico comes up with it. Lamendola. Here's Adam Lamendola. Driving to the net. Shot wide. Yeah, good good possession shot by Lamendola there. That's either a goal or it's wide. And again, now this is where Pico's got to handle the pressure. You got some young guys back there and Spalina and Weiserich and Big time hit, Cauley laying the lumber. So yeah. Alyssa will just send Cauley back, but big defensive play. Yeah, I, I don't love the, the pick. In, in situations like that, you're just inviting a double team. Um, I'd rather see them just, I think they're gonna throw it away. Yeah. Yeah, if you're Mass Peak, just clear out space. It's hard to take balls away now with the, with the stick technology. You bring another guy to the ball, you're just inviting a double, making it easier for these guys to jump, and that's exactly what Coley did here. Here he goes again. Tyler Burns. Burns directing traffic. And the Chiefs in no rush. Second time this season, Massapequa scored 10 or more goals in a game. That's off to the left, Burns rifles it. Yeah, and if you're Massapequa, you don't really need a shot right now. Fazio goes down, big hit from behind, the second hit in there. There's a whistle on the initial hit, no flag though. Looks like we're gonna get a loose ball push on Syosset, so they'll reset here. All right, so here's Garjulo. Garjulo, shot wide. Yeah, if I'm Coach Draper and the, and the Mass Speaker staff here, I, I am screaming that we don't need shots. You can handle pressure, but you know a save here would be just as good as a turnover. Ball pops out. Still loose. And here comes Syosset, Evan Ostrager. And Ostrager can, can go to the cage. He already has a goal this year. He can shoot. That's what he's thinking, and Giannotti denied. Here's Lamandola. Yeah, Pico dodged a bullet there. Drive Weiserek. Weiserek doubled, ball's loose, Cauley's there. And a big hit, penalty upcoming. For Syosset, either pick it up or let Massapequa touch it. And a couple of hits afterwards as well. Oh, you're gonna get another one here. They're gonna be two men up. That's a case, Tom, where if you're Massapequa, you gotta keep your composure. 100%. You know, one, you don't really need to go to the cage. You're keeping Syosset in this game by going to the cage, and, and uh, Syosset does a good job of causing the turnover. Then you cannot foul. The one thing you can't give these guys right now at this stage in the game is a chance to, you know, get an and one. So they're gonna get a man up. They've had some really good looks on the man up. If you're Syosset, you just don't wanna take too much time. 46 seconds, you'd like to get you know, a, a, a shot within about 15 oh, seconds, and that should leave you time to face off and have a, a quality possession at the end of this game. Okay, I'm, I'll go back. I'll go back. All good. At least we got it. <laughs> so Nolan Weiserek and Tyler Burns, each with a minute. It's good thinking, Seven seconds got left it. in the fourth, and Sayas, it has to score quickly. Well, the six on four should allow you to do that, right? Um, 
you know, the key here now is Gennady. We know how good he is in the cage. Can he come up with a big save? And if your mesh peak will pack it in, give Gennady a chance on something from the outside. Do not let them throw the ball inside. You know, take as much time as they can on the outside. This guy's come up big all day for Sayasa. David Disquay, five goals. A sixth would make it a one goal game. Yeah, you got the two shooters up top here in Waxer and, and Disquay. Turner from Accardo. Here's Waxer. Disquay. Disquay steps into it, low to low, off to the left. Gennady fighting for possession. Yeah, not, not a bad shot. Nice job by Masspeak with packing it in. Rosenfeld. Slips it, deflected. Azevedo. Up top, Disquay again. Save Gennady. And that's exactly what you want, right? Make it from the outside. Gennady, nice job just throwing the ball downfield. And they actually get it to Pettis. And Massapequa is going to survive with less than 10 seconds to go. Pequa with possession, and the celebration is on. Massapequa comes on the road and knocks off Syosset, winning it 10 8 in the thriller. Yeah, not the cleanest games, but a fun game. A lot of action. You know, obviously this rivalry, you know, you, you're going to see games like this, you know, a lot of emotion and things like that. And for Massapequa, you, you, you did what you had to do. You hung on and won a game. And for Syos, it, it's another game where you fell behind and, and, you know, you rallied, but it just wasn't enough. Well, and at the end of every hard-fought battle is a rainbow. And for Massapequa, take that smile back over to Pequa and... Good victory for Massapequa as they pick up their second win of the year. They're two and two. As we see uh, a bevy of scorers. Joey Diesa leads the way with three goals. Michael Weigand gets on the scoreboard. And of course, Nolan Weiserek with a pair as well. And for Syasa, David Disquay scores five goals again, but Syasa comes up short as they start their season 0-3. So that'll do it for our entire crew, led by our executive producer, Ben Turchin, for Ron Pierre and Rob Bianco giving you the moving images. For my partner, Tom Rooney, and technical director, Becca Kazax, this is John Perez saying so long from Syosset High School. This has been a presentation of Nassau County Boys Lacrosse on your home for New York's high school sports. The Varsity Media Sports Network.